to uh, be back in, in Simon Scott Assembly Hall. Um, I want to first get a terrific crowd tonight. And, um, you know, Thursday night, um, March Madness going on. There's a lot of games on TV right now. Um, and for our, our fans to come out and support us, um, they were huge tonight. And I uh, just want to make sure that uh, I publicly thank them. Uh, and I hope that they'll return on Sunday at 2 o'clock. Uh, when, and we find out uh, later on tonight who will be playing. But we know this, that we'll be playing uh, here on Sunday at 2. So uh, really happy for our players. I thought they came out, um, especially in the first half, with a lot of great energy, uh, hit shots. I thought we were terrific defensively throughout the game. Um, really try to take them. This is a, a team that runs a lot of sets. And with only one day, really, um, day and a half to prepare, uh, we, we tried to just make it as simple as we could um, and, and give them a game plan and, and that they were very comfortable with. Uh, and I thought that they just executed it uh, in a really, really great way tonight, especially defensively. Um, and, and I think that's why we're, we're sitting here and moving on. Uh, it's because of the job that we did uh, on the defensive end. So really proud of our guys and uh, we look forward to the opportunity to, to keep advancing. Obviously, uh, you mentioned the crowd, uh, it, more than just aesthetics. I mean, it seemed like when they got close, they, the crowd would get up, and then you got right. to make a push back. I mean, is it a tangible thing that you think? Oh, there's no question that they give you energy. And the thing that we appreciate about our crowd is that they, there's an intelligence about them that they know when we need uh, that, you know, whether it's we need to get the stop or it's a big possession and we need to score. Um, so I, I just thought that they gave us, there was a really good feel. Um, just with when we needed them the most. Um, and then they got really excited, obviously, anytime we scored. Um, and there's a, a lot of excitement there, too. And that just gives your kids energy. I mean, it's instant energy uh, that the crowd gives your, your guys um, when they're playing well and they're hitting shots. How important was Jen's defensively on Bennett? It seemed like she didn't really get in the paint sure. very easily. Well, we, we knew going into it that, uh, you know, Jen's had a, to, uh, got a lot of really good fives. Um, in the league, and, and uh, you know, we, we, we talked a little bit to our guys about Ball State reminds me a little bit of Michigan, um, in, in they have some similarities. Um, Purdue and the fact that they, they use so many different actions, screening actions. Um, and so we thought it was, we knew it was going to be critical that Jen was very physical uh, with her from the start, and then she got in early foul trouble. I thought Kim Royster came in, did some, gave us some great minutes. Um, lost her a few times underneath the basket, but uh, I thought for the most part, keeping her, you know, in check for most of the game uh, was really important to, uh, you know, to us having success. You guys obviously had a, a hot start, but just coming out of the halftime after they kind of fought back, there, there was no signs of any given. You guys, that's from 17 11 in the third quarter. Right. So how important was it not to kind of fall back into that trap of well, slipping? We, we've learned a lot of lessons here in the last probably uh, month to three weeks um, when uh, we felt like looking back at that Purdue loss in the NCAA tournament that the way we came out in that second half probably had a lot to do with the fact that uh, we lost the lead and uh, Purdue ended up winning the game. So we made sure that uh, as a staff, we, we, that was going to be the message when we left that, hey, you know, Ball State has nothing to lose. Um, and they're going to uh, stab and miss, they're going to trap, they're going to take chances. Uh, we, we have to make sure that uh, we execute, we keep our heads. Uh, we got a, a little bit right before halftime you know, with some, some careless, careless turnovers. Um, and so we, we talked a lot about that. The thing that I challenged our group though was not to go out in that second half uh, with, with low energy and uh, you know, not motivated because uh, it was really important that we had a, a good third quarter, I thought. Just, you kind of mentioned just the turnovers, but how are you guys able to kind of weather that storm when obviously they can kind of get momentum that way? I mean, it seemed like you were able to still do well on the boards and sure. everywhere else. Well, you know, I think that <coughs> goes back to Sam, our experience, our veteran club, uh, that, uh, you know, they, they understand that, you know, they got a feel for the game, what's inside the game, and when we're turning it over, uh, you know, it just seems like uh, calmer, 
you know, heads prevail in those situations. And and uh, and there was just a lot of a lot of different parts of the game that I thought, uh, you know, when they started to make a run, then we were able to make a run. But uh, after after I thought halftime, you know, our, our ball security did did improve and got better. They were still pressing us. Um, I think it was just a matter of of us uh, just making sure that uh, you know we had our pieces in the right places where they needed to be and not trying to do too much and not trying to overthink it and just really trying to keep it simple. And, um, and that has a lot to do with uh, having a veteran club out there. I mean, how motivated, how motivated do you think this team is? I mean, it's one of those things when you, you miss the NCAA tournament, some teams don't necessarily come out. I mean, sure. do, do you have to see it first to know that it, that they're going to want to play in this tournament? Or, well, you know, you know I think uh, any time that uh, this is what we've talked about, um, Today, what the senior class um, has become the winningest class in Indiana women's basketball history, and so um, and I don't. It's, it, and, and again, I'm in all respect to um, uh, Amber Dean and and, and Taishi Towner, you know, that have been with us one year, two years. You know, Carly and Lex, and Jen, you know, have been with us the longest. And so uh, that was, we mentioned that today, you know, at our shoot around when we ended that, that they had an opportunity uh, to become the winningest uh, uh, class in the history, as well as we have an opportunity to be the winningest team, you know, in a season here at Indiana. So, uh, you yeah, know, we're playing for a lot. And uh, that's the motivation. And, um, you know, I got competitive kids. And I would expect, um, uh, nothing more than their very best, and, and it's about competing. And uh, you know, you're, you got to screw loose if you don't, you know, you don't get excited and fired up to do that. And the fact that we're still playing, um, and, and hopefully advancing in this thing, um, will, will be a, a testament to just how they they're showing up right now and still motivated, um, you know, to play. We've, we have to put the NCAA thing behind us and move on and realize that uh, there's games to be played and we got to show up and, um, you know, we got to play and get excited about it. I don't think that's that's the, the problem right now is getting excited uh, because as I always remind them, there's a lot of a lot of teams out there that are done, you know, and they're not playing. They don't have an opportunity to put on their uniform anymore. And uh, that, to me, again, is, is motivation enough for our seniors. But it's also a great experience. It's tournament experience. It's what we need for those young kids. Anything else for that? Just completely off topic, you guys obviously share a, a building facility with the men's team. I was just wondering what your reaction was to, to Coach Green. Um, it's, it's been an interesting day. And, Tom is a friend of mine, and so is that staff. And it didn't matter if it was Tom. This is the, the, the time of year, excuse me, that's really difficult because not just Tom, but I have some other coaching friends in our game, the women's game, that are they're not at the respective universities right now. And that's tough, you know? What we do is difficult. And uh, I know Sandy didn't make me want to make me get emotional, but um, you know, one of the things about uh, Coach Crane is that um, you know when we got here, um, he, he instantly became somebody that um, I sought out um, for advice. Um, we had a lot of different conversations. Um, somebody that. <clears throat> stays in contact through, you know, via text or uh, just making sure after whether if it's a tough loss or if it's a um, a great win. And um, I'm gonna miss that. But I know this, I know something about Tom, is that um, not only is he a great coach, and um, I think he's a better man. And um, that's, I'm so grateful and blessed <coughs> that I can, uh, say that I had the opportunity to work along the side of him, but I'm even um, more grateful that I can call him a friend. And um, so it's, that's, that's what it is. And uh, here's, here's what I do know about him. He's gonna, he's gonna move on, and he's, he's gonna be fantastic um, at his next stop. There's no question. 
And uh, I'm going to keep following him and cheering him on. And I know this, he's going to do the same for, for me and our staff and our players. Because that's, that's the guy he is. That's who I get to work with every day. And um, like I said, for that, I'm extremely, extremely um, lucky. And um, we wish him nothing but the best. Him and Joni and his three kids will go off. And like I said, Tom will, Tom will lay on his feet. And he'll do great things. And um, I'm just honored that I get to call on my friend every day. Anything else? Thanks, Coach.